Hey you guys, time for Tomes of Terror, my book review show. Now this book I picked completely at random. Uh, again, this was one that was recommended on my Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can actually read this one for free. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I saw the title and the, and the, I didn't even read the description at all. <laughs> <laughs> which which I'll get into in a minute. I didn't read the description at all. I was just like, uh, it's called Dark Corner. And I was like, no, oh, that sounds like an intriguing title. Why not? So, uh, so I put it on the list and uh, started reading it. Now, what I did not know, and at first I, I will admit that I was kind of like bummed out about it. I was like, oh, it's a vampire novel. So know that it, it, you know, it's a vampire novel. Uh, I'm not, I like vampire stuff. I do, but it's not my favorite monster, especially if I'm going to be reading reading about it. Um, I don't mind vampire movies so much. It's not usually something I seek out much anymore because I feel like I've seen all the good ones. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm always willing to have my mind changed about it. But as far as novels go, I haven't really read any vampire stuff like in a long time. It's just not a monster. It's just kind of like zombies. I don't really want to read a zombie thing. It's like I'm kind of sick of zombie movies. Um, you know, so books, I usually like haunted house stuff or you know, stuff that's more psychological or stuff that's not classifiable, like the monster is not classifiable. So I was kind of like bummed out when I discovered or realized that this was a vampire novel. But that said, it actually turned out to be a pretty entertaining read. Now this book uh, was written by Brandon Massey and it's uh, older than I originally thought. I think it came out back in 2005. And uh, as I mentioned, it's called Dark Corner. Now, what ends up happening with this? Now, like I said, I'm going to say right here, this was um, pretty good. I didn't love it, but at no point did I be like, oh shit, I don't even want to finish this. You know what I mean? So it was like kind of in the middle, like three star type of shit to me. I think the thing that bothered me the most about it, well, I don't even know. I don't know if it bothered me about it or because some things about it, like, look, essentially, and I'm going to tell you this right now, essentially, this is Salem's Lot but filtered through, at least the first part of it, uh, filtered through Blackula. And to be honest, uh, Brandon Massey for sure, like, was homaging Blackula because one of the characters in it, not one of the vampires, but one of the vampires' um, kind of half-human servants is named Mama Walde, uh, which if you've never seen Blackula or Scream, Blackula Scream, which you absolutely should because they're both amazing movies. Uh, I love both of them. Um, that was actually, that's actually Blackula's real name is Mama Walde. And so there is a component in this that's very similar. Like the vampire's backstory, the main vampire's backstory is very similar to the backstory in Blackula. The setup of the novel, um, the narrative structure of the novel is almost, and the plot beats of the novel, I'm going to say, I haven't read Salem's Lot in a long time, but... It's very, very similar to Salem's Lot. Now, you could say that Salem's Lot is very, very similar to the original Bram Stoker's Dracula, obviously, and Stephen King has said that too. He's like, you know, I wanted to do my own modern modern riff on Dracula. So this is kind of, I don't know. So I guess you could say, but it is very, very similar to Salem's Lot. So know that going in. But that said, um, you know, I like Salem's Lot. I like Blackula. So you want to combine those two things? Fine with me. Uh, I found it a perfectly entertaining novel. Not great, but you know, I had a pretty good time with it. So the story behind this, um, there's a, a guy, the main character is named David Hunter. Now, he, his dad, Richard, who he was sort of like estranged from, he didn't really know that much about. His dad, who's kind of like famous, like uh, kind of famous in literary circles and things like that, it's kind of very well known. He apparently dies in a boating accident and David returns to uh, the town where his dad was living, which was a very, very small town called Mason's Corner in Mississippi. Now, it's called Dark Corner because the, uh, the uh, population of the town is 90% uh, black. Now, originally, uh, there was a house in the town called Jubilee, which, like I said, this is very much like Salem's Lot, like Marsden House or whatever it was called. Uh, there's there's a plantation house called Jubilee, and there's a backstory with uh, Mason, the guy, you know, Mr. Mason, I can't remember what his first name was, but Mason, who was like a slave owner, like a plantation owner, uh, owned the house back in the old days, 
and he was actually killed. Him and his family were killed during a slave uprising. And interestingly, this slave uprising ties in with David Hunter and with his ancestor. And it also ties in with the vampires, like why the vampires end up in this town as well. So David moves back to his dad's old house because he feels as though uh, he missed out on something not knowing his dad growing up. Because as I said, his dad kind of took off and like left his mom when he was very young, so he didn't really know him. So he wants to go back and kind of see what he can see. So he goes back and moves into the house. Uh, he's from Atlanta, I think. He'd been living in Atlanta. So he moves back to this little town in Mississippi, and he's not planning to stay there forever. He just wants to stay there for maybe like a year or something and uh, see what's going on with it. Now, as soon as he gets there, he meets uh, the really nice uh, neighbors like across the street who's like an older gentleman and uh, his wife and the older gentleman is like a retired professor and he's like a historian so he's kind of like the source of all the exposition about all the history that's going to take place and I liked his character a lot he was a lovely person but I did have a problem with like the dialogue because it seemed like he talked very much like a professor would talk but not really you know what I'm saying it's I kind of feel like he talked like somebody <laughs> who was trying to make somebody sound like a professor would talk. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, he kind of sounded like that. It didn't really sound like, uh, his dialogue didn't sound super realistic to me, but he, like I said, he was kind of like this character who was there to tell all about the history of the town. Um, David also meets uh, this young woman named Nia, and the two of them start a relationship with one another. Like I said, very much like Salem's Lot, where it's this guy, he's a writer or whatever. I, although I don't, David isn't a writer. I think he's like a web designer or something like that. He's something where he works at home. So he beats this young woman named Nia. They start to fall in love with one another. And also, uh, in a parallel uh, kind of thing that's going on, there's this vampire named Kyle, and he has a vampire mother named Lisha. And they, and she's kind of like raised him because apparently like vampires exist in this universe, but they like to kind of keep a low profile and they don't kill people anymore. They basically just drink blood from like blood banks or whatever. Uh, and they have some, there's not a lot of them, but they have a thing set up where they don't have to kill people anymore. And um, Lisha is kind of like, however old she is, she's like really, really ancient. And she basically says, you know, that we don't do that savage vampire shit anymore. We, like, kill humans. We're just trying to, like, coexist or, like, just keep on the down low and, like, not interact with them and not hurt them. We're just going to kind of do our thing over here and not worry about it anymore. Uh, so she's raised her son, Kyle, who is now older, you know, older, and he's a vampire as well. But in a parallel story to David and his father, Kyle... Um, wants to find his own father. Now, his own father was this very, very powerful vampire named Diallo, who was actually made into a vampire by Lisha back then. She was like, um, he was like a warrior in Africa, and then he was brought to the U.S. during the slave trade, and he was one of the ones that kind of, like, revolted against a lot of the slave masters and stuff like that. So he became very, very powerful. And uh, there was, at some point in... Um, Dark Corner or Mason's Corner, there was kind of like this big confrontation between Diallo and some of the other people he had made into vampires and uh, David Hunter's ancestor. So they kind of fought and they actually ended up putting Diallo into like a, a stasis or like a sleep. And he's actually like in a cave underneath Jubilee, the plantation house, which has been abandoned for a very long time. So you have these two kind of forces coming together. Like David comes back into the town trying to figure out like what is the deal with his dad. And then when he gets there, he starts finding all these little weird things about, you know, the kind of the history of the town and how his ancestors are involved in it. And then you have Kyle, the vampire, who has decided he doesn't want any more of this nicey nice vampire thing. He wants to actually kind of, he doesn't really get like that until he comes back and like gets in with his dad. But he's not really down with this whole uh, kind of, we just want to stay away from humans type of thing. He wants power. 
So he goes to the t- the little town and uh, essentially tries to resurrect like his dad Diallo. And as that happens, he becomes more uh, kind of more evil, more like Diallo is. And Diallo, uh, once he's awakened and is back to his full strength again, uh, they basically him and Kyle start to make um, just trying to start making like a vampire army out of like all the people in the town. So they have, you know, these whole like big packs of like vampire dogs, essentially. And they have all of these kind of humans because there's kind of a difference between the vampire vampires, like the powerful vampires and ones that they just bit and then they just made them they're kind of vampires too, but they're like not as powerful. There's like lower level. But the fact that this the vampire plague can sort of spread either through the people or through the dogs means that this little town like starts to pretty much like build up into like vampire army territory like pretty quick. And so as that starts happening, obviously people at first don't really want to believe it, but then you know, David and Nia and, you know, all the other gang, like all the good guys, like including like the sheriff and everything, they kind of start to think, well, there's like some weird shit going on, like people start going missing. And then eventually when they see particular things, they have to come to terms with the fact that these are actual vampires and, you know, the whole town is going to be overrun if we don't do something about it. So it's basically comes down to, it just builds up and builds up to a point where, it's like the townsfolk or the remaining townsfolk against this ever growing like vampire menace sort 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 of thing. So it's a pretty straightforward uh vampire story. As I said, the plot beats to it are very very similar to Salem's Lot. Uh so if you like Salem's Lot and you're not concerned that this is essentially like I said a kind of a riff on Salem's Lot just filtered through a different sensibility. Uh you know filtered through Blackula, through the black experience, through uh, slave trade and stuff like that. Like I said, which was kind of, I mean, the the backstory of Blackula in the movies was kind of the same thing, like similar to that, like had, having to do the slave trade and everything. So it has that kind of uh, thing to it too. Honestly, like I said, it's, this was like a pretty decent book. It's was quite long. Um, I didn't really realize that when I was reading it. It's It's like 550 pages or something like that. Um, probably didn't need to be that long, but it didn't really seem to drag or anything. Um, mostly it kind of jumped around from like a lot for a lot of different characters, like, uh, in the town and stuff, which actually kind of kept it sort of fresh and kept it moving. Honestly, I, I quite enjoyed it. Like I said, I didn't love it. Um, but because I guess because it wasn't a super original idea. And like I said, it's not really the book's fault because that I'm not super into, uh, vampires like I'm su- not super into vampire novels and I went into this not realizing that it was a vampire novel because as I said I did not read the blurb like at all and I'm not even really sure I'm not even really sure if the blurb says vampire in it um it does say undead but yeah I guess you could like for I mean you know undead that usually means vampire or zombie but um because I'm reading the blurb right now and I was saying does it even say vampire in the blurb so even if I'd read the blurb like would I even know what was going on but you know what I mean I don't know but um yeah so it might have been just that I'm not like super crazy about vampire stuff but that said like for a vampire novel this was actually a pretty good like entertaining one as I said I did have a issue with like a couple of the characters whose dialogue didn't sound all that realistic to me I mean most of them most of them did like most of it sounded pretty naturalistic but the one character and he was a good character too was like kind of the professor guy he very much sounded like I don't know if anybody would talk like that in real life but I could be wrong about that um and as I said he seemed to be the guy that like knew everything and there was also kind of like another character um who was a psychic and she kind of knew some stuff and could like fill in some other blanks type of thing too. Um, so there was that. So you could tell that there was a couple of characters that were put in there specifically for the purpose of like filling in information for our protagonists. And there's nothing wrong with that. You got to do that somehow. But I think it was like a little bit too obvious maybe. I don't know. That's maybe why I, why I thought that. But other than that, like I said, it's, it's pretty entertaining. If, if you want to read something that's, like I said, it's long, but it doesn't, it didn't really feel all that long to me. And it's just basically like a small town 
small Mississippi town versus vampires. You know, it's actually really quite good in that. And some of the action scenes are really good. It keep it, like I said, it moves along at a good clip. But, you know, if Salem's Lot meets Blackula sounds like something you want to read, then this is the book for you because that is almost exactly what it is. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, decent read. Not my favorite, but, um, you know, as I said, I'm not super into vampires. But if you are into vampires, have a read and tell me what you thought about it or if you've read it or if you've read some of uh, Brandon Massey's other stuff. Because I know he wrote one called Thunderland that a lot of people uh, talk really good about. And uh, I'll probably get around to that one as well. Um, but yeah, so let me know if you've read it in the comments and that will do it for this Tomes of Terror. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.